The brand new Weeble 3 gimbal from Zion just came out. Like, literally, it dropped right when this video released. But I got early access to one of these new camera stabilizers, and I put it to the test across three different weddings to see if it's the best gimbal for wedding filmmakers. So let's take a look. So in this review, we're gonna go over the features of the brand new Weeble 3, as well as the layout, and talk about how it compares to its competition. Then I'll be sharing the things that I love about this gimbal, as well as the changes that I'd like to see implemented. And finally, I'll speak to my experience using it at real weddings and share my decision on whether or not this is the best gimbal for wedding filmmakers. And if you want to pick one up, you can help the channel out by using the link down below. So the Weeble 3 is the latest in the Zion gimbal lineup, and it's a compact yet powerful gimbal that is made to hold most mirrorless and DSLR cameras. They have a compatibility list available online that shows the various camera body and lens pairings that this gimbal can hold. And while I do recommend checking that out before purchasing, it seems to work well with most of the cameras that any of us wedding filmmakers find ourselves using. Now the design will look familiar, but it's slightly different from the previous model. It keeps the sling structure, but improves upon it in my opinion. It adds a few features and also gets rid of the flip out screen, which was here. Though I believe you can connect to their app as a monitor, which is something I personally don't like doing. And you can also use the trans mount accessories. Back to the structure real quick, you'll notice that the shape is generally the same. But instead of the tripod legs that doubled as a handle in previous versions and could be taken off and reattached in different places like up here, the Weeble 3 keeps the tripod legs on the bottom, though they are removable. And then it has a mounting point for a mini tripod handle type thing on the left and the right. And of course, you can attach other things here too, including the wrist rest, which it comes with to take some stress off of your wrist. Now, working our way from the bottom to the top of the gimbal, we have the tripod base, which folds up to be used as a handle. Then we have the main handle with this kind of weird shaped bottom. And I'm not really sure why it's like this. Um, it might be a grip thing. Maybe it's a battery thing. Maybe it's something I don't understand. But either way, this is where the charging port is, which is USB-C. Then we go up to the screen, the joystick, the mode button, the record button, and then on the other side is the menu button and the light control. Around to the front, we have the trigger and the wheel, which serve different functions and can be customized to your preferences. Up top is the dual quick release system, the motor locks, which are on each motor, and then the light, which we saw in the M3, but is new to the Weeble line. It can be set by Kelvin temperature anywhere between tungsten and daylight and also various power levels. And lastly, another new feature is the microphone, which you can run into your camera. I actually didn't use this at any of my weddings, so let's just give you an idea of what that sounds like. For a reference point, this is the audio coming directly from my camera with the built-in camera microphone. Testing, one, two, three. And now we switch to the mic from the Weeble 3, and I have that running into my camera. So testing, one, two, three. And that's actually the first time that I've tested that as it's not a feature that is very important to me. Um, so you can form your own opinion on that one. Also, the gimbal feels very sturdy and high quality, even the things that sometimes seem to get skipped over a bit on the quality side, like the motor locks, for example, they feel solid to me. Now let's talk about the competition. There are lots of gimbals on the market, but I think the main competitor is the DJI RSC2. The reality is that you will be able to get great results from both of these gimbals, and it really comes down to personal preference. As far as hard stats go though, the RSC2 can hold 6.6 .6 pounds, and the Weeble 3 actually doesn't specify a weight limit, and I actually did ask, but rather it provides that list of compatible combinations. Now, I can't give the slight edge to either one here, but I will say that they are made for the same level of camera, and I think they can both hold the same setups that most wedding filmmakers are using. They both can control your camera and both have various modes for whatever you're shooting. The RSC2 has a battery rated at 14 hours and the Weeble 3 has a whopping 21 hours of runtime. They both have a dual quick release system and the Weeble 3 has the light and the microphone. One great feature of the RSC2 though is that it's foldable, which makes it very compact for packing up or traveling. It's worth noting though that the Weeble 3 is of course brand new and the RSC2 came out, I believe in late 2020. And finally, price-wise, the RSC2 is 499 MSRP and the Weeble 3, I actually don't know at the time of recording this. Um, probably should have asked my contact, but the Weeble 2 was 549 MSRP and I think there's a chance that this would be cheaper since it doesn't have the flip-out screen. 
but you can click that link in the description down below and find out the price once this video is live. So all that to say the Weeble 3 stacks up well against its competitors, and I think we are at the point where we aren't really gonna see any huge innovations in the gimbal world for a little while. Um, it's really like the small things, again, those personal preferences that sway you to go one direction or another. And I think the Weeble 3 is up there with anything else in a similar category. Now, of course, with any new piece of gear, there are things that I love and things that I don't love. So let's dive into that with the new Weeble 3. First off, I love the size. I tried some of the lab gimbals when Zion released them and while they worked well and could fly some really big camera setups, it was just overkill in my opinion for my uses and not something that I would want to take to a wedding, certainly not something I would want to travel with. So this is the perfect balance between compact, but also being able to fly most wedding filmmaker setups. I don't feel like it's intimidating at a wedding and I can travel easily with it, which I did for one of the weddings I shot out to California. I also love the simplicity of the setup. Balancing it was easy with the motor locks, though that's nothing too new. Uh, but going into the menu on screen and dialing in the motor levels was also very easy. No connecting to an app, no confusing menu system. I was ready to go in probably five minutes from the time that I opened it up. The thing I love more than maybe anything though is the way that it feels. I can't explain it. I can't put exact numbers and facts to it. It just feels right. Those of you who have followed this channel for a while know that I've gotten to be hands-on with many gimbals released over the last like, well, I don't know, whenever gimbals started coming out. I've almost tried all of them and even with most of them being given to the channel for free, I had chosen to continue using my old original Zion Crane for no other reason than it just felt right to me. The way I moved and the way I wanted the camera to move was something I could only get to feel right with that original crane setup until I tried the Weeble 3. And I'll take that a step further and back that claim up by letting you know that of all the gimbals that I have had sent to me over the years, this is the first one that I have actually taken to a real wedding and used. In fact, I've used it at every wedding that I've shot since I got it in the mail, and that in itself should say something to you. I also love that they addressed one of my biggest complaints, which was the internal battery. I said that I prefer external batteries that I can replace, but that if they must do an internal one, I need it to be rated in the 12 to 16 hour range. Well, they went ahead and gave it 21 hours of battery life, and while I haven't timed it, I have kept it on for an entire wedding day three times now, and I've only lost one bar of battery life each time. So this has crossed the threshold of acceptable battery life to me and put my mind at ease. It also has a fast charging system, which means it charges fast, but I don't actually have stats on how fast it actually charges. Still something to note. The last thing I love is the new structure, which is very similar, but that tripod handle mounts on the bottom right or left, and I like the way this feels a lot better. It's offset from that center stock, which I prefer over the old sling setup where the handle was on the back back here, but directly in line with that center column. This offset, in my opinion, gives me better control of the gimbal movements, especially when they're very subtle. And it also closely replicates the setup that I used on the original Zion Crane, which looked like this. Oh, also, I do like that the mic and light integration shows innovation. Uh, the light could have some uses for me on the dance floor, maybe, though I prefer to go handheld there. Um, outside of that, I don't really plan to use the mic or the light, but again, I wanna see these companies taking something great and adding new features onto them without ruining them, and even though it's not for me, I think it's still a good thing. With all the praise though, of course, comes things that I would like to see changed, so let's talk about what I don't love. One of the most frustrating things that I have been saying for literally years is unfortunately true once again, and that is that this gimbal is made for right-handed people. I get it, us left-handers make up a smaller percentage of the population, but I mean, come on. The button setup and joysticks are reachable, but are clearly not made to be used in this orientation. Thank God the tripod handle thing can be mounted on either side, but the wrist guard, as best as I can tell, can only be mounted on the right side, so it's legitimately not even usable if you are left-handed. So once again, I am asking for these designs to be centered like the OG crane where I'm able to choose the orientation that works best for me rather than having the manufacturer decide how it should be used. My second and last don't love really builds off of that actually, which is that because I'm left-handed and because I use the bottom right mount for the tripod handle like this, 
I can't really attach a monitor in a way that makes sense. Yes, I can mount one on the bottom left, but then I'm looking you know, across my body at it and it doesn't feel right to me. Now, the design with the rear motor below the camera means that I can see the back of the camera and I can see the screen. So that's what I've done so far. But if you do wanna attach a monitor and use the extra grip or the wrist guard, that monitor will have to be mounted on the outside of your dominant hand, no matter which orientation you're in. And that might feel perfectly fine to you. It might even be what you prefer, in which case it's no big deal. And there are also attachments like that one that I use on the OG crane setup that I could attach down to the bottom here and alleviate this, but it's something you wanna be aware of. So now we get into the question of, is this the best gimbal for wedding filmmakers currently on the market? I think it's hard to say what is the best, right? Because there is a lot of personal preference involved, but is this an amazing gimbal for wedding filmmakers? Yes, yes, and definitely yes. I've tried out tons of gimbals and I have never brought another gimbal to a wedding before, and I felt comfortable enough after testing this thing for less than an hour. And even though there are still some things that I would love to see different, this immediately felt right. I didn't feel like I was pushing the motors as far as the weight limit, Things didn't feel complicated, like I'd have to learn a bunch of menu things or button combinations that could screw me over on a wedding day. I did secretly leave my old gimbal in the car just in case for that first wedding, but I've used this in three consecutive weddings since I've gotten it and I've loved the results and I'm gonna be using this moving forward. It's great to see another solid option come onto the market and it only pushes the competition to do better, which means ultimately we as wedding filmmakers are the winners. So I hope that you found this review helpful. I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Please leave them down below in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.